I'm Rachel, and I'm Narrator One. I'm Caitlin, I'm Ariete. I'm Grace, and I am Boy. I'm Leah, and I'm Narrator Two. Ready? Imagine you were nearly 14 years old, but were only a few inches tall, and lived under the floor of a great house in the country. And imagine your tiny father one day took you upstairs and outdoors for the first time. And on that very first day, you met a being that seemed like a giant. That's what happened to Ariete, one of the little people called the borrowers. While her father was at work by the front door of the house, she ran off under a cherry tree to sit among the grass and wildflowers. But then something moved above her on the bank. Something glittered. Ariete stared. It was an eye, an eye like her own, but enormous, a glaring eye. Then the eye blinked. A great fringe of lashes came curving down and flew up again, out of sight. Ariete sat breathless out of fear. Cautiously, she moved her legs. She would slide noiselessly in amongst the grass and slither away down the bank. Don't move. The voice, like the eye, was enormous, but somehow hushed. Ariete, her heart pounded in her ears, heard the breath again drawing swiftly into the vast lungs. Or I shall hit you with my stick. Suddenly, Ariete became calm. Her voice, crystal thin and hairball clear, came shimmering into the air. Why? In case you ran toward me and quickly through the grass. In case you came and scrabbled at me with your nasty little hands. Ariete stared at the eye. She held herself quite still. Did you come out of the house? Yes. From where in the house? I'm not going to tell you. Then I shall hit you with my stick. All right, hit me. I'll pick you up and break you in half. All right. Ariete stood up and took two paces forward. There was an earthquake in the grass. He spun away from her and sat up. A great mountain in a green jersey. Stay where you are. Ariete stared up at him, breathless, she felt, and light with fear. I guess you're about nine. You're wrong. I'm ten. He looked down at her, breathing deeply. How old are you? Fourteen, next June. There was a silence while Ariete waited, trembling a little. Can you read? Of course, can't you? No. I mean, yes. I, I mean, not so well. I can read anything. If someone could hold the book and turn the pages. Could you read out loud? Of course. Would you wait here while I run upstairs and get a book now? Well... I wouldn't be a minute. He began to move away, but turned suddenly and came back to her. He stood a moment, as though embarrassed. Can you fly? No. Can you? Of course not. I'm not a fairy. Well, nor am I. Nor is anybody. I don't believe in them. You don't believe in them? No. Do you? Of course not. But but supposing you saw a little man, about as tall as a pencil, with a blue patch in his trousers, halfway up a curtain window, um, carrying a doll's teacup, would you say it was a fairy? No. I'd say it was my father. Oh. Are there many people like you? No, none. We're all different. I mean, as small as you. What a funny question. Surely you don't think that there are many people in the world your size. There are more my size than yours. Honestly, do you really think... I mean, whatever sort of a world would it be? Those great chairs, I've seen them. Fancy if you if you had to make chairs that size for everyone. And the stuff for their clothes, miles and miles of it. Tenths of it. And the sewing... And their great houses reaching up so you can hardly see the ceilings, their great beds, the food they eat, great smoking mountains of it. That's why my father said it's a good thing they're dying out. Just a few, my father said, that's all we need to keep us going. Otherwise, he says, the whole thing gets, what do you say, exaggerated? What do you mean, keep us going? So Ariete told him about borrowing, how difficult it was, and how dangerous. She told him about the storerooms under the floor, her, about her mother, Homily, and her father, Pod. She told him about Pod's exploits, his skill, how he would venture bravely into the house above to borrow whatever his family needed. Borrowing? Is that what you call it? What else could you call it? I call it stealing. But we are borrowers. Like, you're a, a human being, or whatever it's called. We're part of the house. You might as well say that. 
The fire grate steals the coal from the coal scuttle. Then what is stealing? You don't know, silliness? Well, suppose my uncle Henry borrowed something from the house, and then my father took it from him. But borrowers don't steal. Except from human beings. Oh dear, you are funny. Human beings are for borrowers, like bread's for butter. The boy was silent a while. A sigh of wind rustled the cherry tree and shivered among the blossoms. Well, I don't believe it. I don't believe that's all we're here for, and I don't believe we're dying out. Oh goodness, just use your common sense. You're the only real human being I ever saw, and I only knew of three more, but I know lots and lots of borrowers. Then where are they now? Tell me that. Well, my Uncle Henry has a house in the country and four children. But where are the others? Oh, they're somewhere. He shivered slightly in the boy's cold shadow. Well, I've only seen two borrowers, but I've seen hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds oh, no. of human beings. Ariete stood very still. She did not look at him. I don't believe you. All right, then I'll tell you. I still won't believe you. Listen. And he told her about the railway stations and the football matches and the race courses and royal progressions and Albert Hall concerts. He told her about India and China and North America and the British Commonwealth. He told her about the July sales. Not hundreds, but thousands and millions and billions and trillions of great, big, enormous people. Now, do you believe me? Ariete stared up at him with enormous, frightened eyes. I don't know. As for you, I don't believe that there are any more borrowers anywhere in the world. I believe you're the last three. We're not. There's Aunt Lupi and Uncle Henry and all the cousins. I bet they're dead. And what's more, no one will ever believe I've seen you. And you'll be the very last, because you're the youngest. One day, you'll be the only borrower left in the world. He sat still, waiting, but she did not look up. Now you're crying. I'm going home. Don't go. Not yet. Yes, I'm going. Please just let me get the book, please. Oh, just be a minute. All right. And he was gone, and she should, stood there alone in the sunshine, shoulder deep in the grass. What had happened seemed too big for thought. Not only had she been seen, but she had been talked to. Not only had she been talked to, but she had... Ariete, come here! She spun around, and there was a pod on the path, round-faced, kind, familiar. Obediently, she started running over to him. What do you want to go in the grass for? I might never have seen you. Hurry up now. Your mother will have tea waiting.